point of this video. For one, I'm going to be very basic throughout this so that everyone can get what I'm saying. So there's no issue. Aaron, EKC, keeps saying things that are not true on her stream. These things directly affect the audience that's watching and whether they'll donate to a charity fundraiser. If she is purposely lying here, then she will not address this to her audience to tell them the truth, to show them the truth. But if she's been lied to, I believe she will go to her audience and tell them the truth to correct the issue. And she'll do it with the same amount of content that she would put toward any other person. She would explain herself to the community so that we can actually make a judgment of whether we hold her to be doing this for someone's gain or her own gain, or whether she can be excused due to the fact that she was lied to. Trying to give her an out because this is a situation where she will be caught up in a fraud raiser if she can't explain to us why she's doing what she's doing. The first point. In the clip, EKC says that the defamation case against Katie is the best. It's going to win. She says this without explaining why or how it's so good or going to win. Let's take the best claim according to those involved in the lawsuit and let's debunk it and prove how it's wrong. We're going to send this video to EKC to explain why she would be lying about it for either her own gain or her friends and then we're going to pose a question to her for her to answer on her channel if she is honest to her subs why would she help someone lie to gain money in a fraud raiser there's many possible reasons that i'll leave up to you to give her a bit of charity before we get into some of my points let's explain why we're talking about the vawa situation VAWA is the only point in the lawsuit that has not been debunked by a video clip or an admission. It's debunked by government data, by the law, or by what you can look up and test. Therefore, we're going to put a direct statement to EKC after showing this. What about the other points in the lawsuit, though? The other points are debunked by video evidence. This is a fact. It's been documented by Menace on his channel. So if EKC wants to challenge the other points of the lawsuit, she can play Menace's video and react to it and explain on her channel how the video clips are not evidence. Because they are evidence. Let's move on to VAWA. Again, I'm going to put the link to Menace's videos so that she can find them in the description and in the pinned comment. Why am I explaining VAWA? Why am I explaining VAWA again? I'm explaining it because I have offered EKC a chance to come talk. And before she does, I'd like to get this out of the way so we can actually make ground explaining how it's obvious that she's helping another creator with a fraud raiser. Again, either purposely or indirectly without realizing it. It is a fraud raiser because the lawsuit is filled with lies. Also, it hasn't even been filed to the court yet. I hate to say this, but this was just brought up yesterday, for God's sakes. It's been filed through Hip Pocket Service, and if you file it that way, if a year goes by, the lawsuit expires. It goes away. It's gone. Why does it matter? If somebody wanted to make a bunch of money off of someone that they hated on YouTube with a large following, they could file a bogus debunked lawsuit against them through Hip Pocket Service, raise a bunch of money, and wait for it to expire so they could keep the money. Whether or not this will happen would depend on if the person has a history of running and supporting fraud raisers, which this individual does. If the current fundraiser has language that would allow them to keep the money even if this happened, which it does and it's wrong for that fundraiser to have that language which allows us to discuss the possibility of if the community is being conned into supporting something that very easily could be remedied so that the language in the fundraiser was clear about returning the money in the situation that the lawsuit doesn't happen the lawsuit being the intended reason to raise the money so now we have supported with facts why we must consider these possibilities. We will move on to VAWA. Does VAWA stand to scrutiny? If it did, we'd let it go. But the VAWA claim does not, and I'll prove it right 
now. Oh, this is so stupid. I've already done this. You'd think they'd actually pay attention before getting up there and lying to their audience on a situation where they or their friend is profiting. On March 17th of 2021, the House of Representatives passed 1620, the Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act of 2021 with bipartisan vote. As it says on Wikipedia. Why does this matter? If we then search for sunset in this document, which is from a justice.gov Violence Against Women Act and this is February 19th of 2020. From the time it was first enacted in 1994, VAWA has been a multifaceted approach to strengthen responses at the local, state, tribal, and federal level to domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking. It has come to my attention that the regular reauthorization of appropriations for VAWA grant programs in 2000, 2005, and 13 with their accompanying challenges, I'm sorry, changes in federal law may have led to a misunderstanding about VAWA as a whole. VAWA contains no sunset provision. It does not expire. Expiration of the appropriations authorizations in VAWA pertains to grant programs, not to other legal improvements that have accompanied these authorizations since 94. Furthermore, Congress may continue to appropriate funding for VAWA grants after they expire, as it did in 19 for the fiscal year 2020. The law is still there until Congress or until whoever is involved with that law votes against it or takes it out of law. So you have to ask yourself, why is Katie being sued? For, for stating that her RO had VAWA applied to it and full faith and credit, which VAWA gives full faith and credit to these protective orders, it's because this lawsuit is fake. It's a lie. It's bunk, in my opinion. Now that we have shown that the main claim in the lawsuit is bunk, the other videos show that the other claims in the lawsuit are bunk menaces videos, we can ask EKC to go to her channel and either take back what she said or fully prove and explain with video clips and evidence how she is right. Explain to your audience that you're wrong if you won't and make an attempt to correct the lie or mistake that you made in the clip yesterday. Now, why do I think she won't do it? Because I think people will go ask for a refund to go fund me if she does it. If she doesn't, why does it matter? Well, EKC, whether she realizes it or not, blindly defends and lies for the fraud raiser operator often to the point that most think she is brainwashed or even profiting herself from her actions. We, the YBI, myself, Menace to Sobriety, and others, always want to give as much charity in these situations. So this video is trying to inform EKC and those around her of why the claim against them for conning the community, running a fraud raiser, or for spreading misinformation for their own gain is fact-based. It's provable, lol and should be taken seriously. If EKC and those around her respect the fact that many, many fraud raisers have not only been exposed but admitted to in the very community that they reside, ironically without them even broadcasting it to their audience, it's insane that they didn't. That community consists of working people and they give their hard-earned money because they are faced with an emergency situation out of charity by you. These words you speak on your stream is you trying to justify him suing her. It is literally what came out of your mouth. Any lie, any fraud raiser, any con against those working people is very much either charity theft, charity fraud, whatever non-legal description you want to use to describe these people being lied to in order to have their money to be donated when if instead they were told the truth and given accurate information about the charity, they most likely would not donate. I'll give you a quick example, a quick little quip to the point, okay? Let's give their narrative really fast. Their narrative is, a big YouTuber is being mean to me, defaming me, and I'm suing her because her words and actions have victimized me. I can't afford it. If you don't donate, I can't get justice. I'm a victim. 
This is literally how it's presented. If we describe the fundraiser from the perspective of most third party viewers though, each point would be the opposite of what is listed. When EKC and I talk, I'll describe this to her in more detail if she wants. So what is my closing point here? In the video clip, she said, we know that because we were told that. And this shows one of two things, that either they are being dishonest for the front fraud raiser operator, or that they themselves are so cognitively biased from constant excuses and lies that they truly believe those excuses over reality. The actual evidence is reality. The excuses and lies are a fantasy. They are a con, a lie. So what is a cult? It's a group of people that believe that their fantasy of a group over reality or proof that uses lies to get people to come into the group and uses propaganda in order to keep them. Hatred for Katie, is this one of the main reasons that she lies? Hatred for Katie also is a reason why they would be dishonest in this situation. They hate her so much that they will even do things to her that in any situation she would be called out for doing and then be called evil, nasty, whatever, you know? The reason that I don't go deep into their hatred of Katie as a reason for their fantasy cult behavior is because it's not an excuse. They can hold disdain for her without it driving them into a cult situation. So it may be a factor for why they're in the cult, but it's not the reason for what they're doing. She will most likely respond to this with, nuh uh. So she'll say some words and then move on. She won't explain things, justify things, prove things, because she can't, and that's why they do it. If you don't think that the evidence we provide is evidence, you need to not only state it openly with your words and say it's not, but you need to tell us exactly why or how the evidence doesn't work or apply. We're gonna hold your feet to the fire to fully explain any issue you have with our info. Though it's okay if you hand wave this all away, like you usually do. It shows all non-cult people that we are right in our judgment that your decision to be dishonest is driven by your own motivation, not the influence from a third party cult leader. So my final point, this group has built a barrier around embarrassment. They don't care if they lie on a public network. They have no shame in spitting on the supporters by dishonestly taking their money. Again, the only way to describe this is a con, a grift. An example is any locale out there, they make money by being the embarrassing reality TV-esque thing that they present. And because of that, they excuse any embarrassment that they should feel. After a time of doing this, the initial embarrassment wears off, which happened to the fraud raiser operator long ago. And then this process becomes a tolerance that builds up so that the locale can keep operating. The thing is, it always leads to depression, sadness, and a hatred for what they're doing. And this is seen in the mod call where the fundraiser operator says, I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to go back to the way it was. This is the buildup of all of the embarrassment that was shoved down into the depths, rising back up when the consequences of extreme conning finally catches up. It is a predictable factor in this and common amongst cons and locales on the internet. Hopefully the fraud raiser operator will be the only one that has these consequences though. If EKC and her cohorts want to go down with that sinking ship, that's their decision. They are adults. They can take the out or they can sink. Uni rock out. Check, check. All right, here we go. Shitty recording this is going to be. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pause it here, Navy. So here's my deal, man. He's got the best case, the best case. So she's saying there's four or five lawsuits against Katie. And out of those four or five lawsuits that fuck, I'm going to have to bleep his damn name out because I'm not putting his name in this video after everything that's happened. Um, but he has the best case. So the thing about that is that he doesn't menace and many other people have gone through it. And he has a horrible case. <laughs> For God's sake. <laughs> That's the point. All right, we've heard people go over this.
process and they've discussed his actual suit. And the problem is, it's just a whole bunch of him claiming that this is what's going on with no evidence. You can't have a good case with no evidence. Well, if you saw Uncivil Law, his take on the case, he was talking about how they didn't put anything they would say something like she said this and then they wouldn't they wouldn't afterwards like any normal lawyer would explain how it defamed him and why and any or anything and he was saying that needs to be there or else they're gonna he said that he was acting as the judge would ask for it to be redone or throw it out one of the two right and one of the first things he said when he was talking about what you just talked about was like you know you don't want to make the judge infer too much Right. So when you have these phrases in these statements that supposedly have been made, you want to explain to everybody what part of that phrase or statement is defamatory and why. She just said her idiot opinion or whatever. That's bad, EKC, if you watch this, because your opinion isn't an idiot opinion. Maybe if, if I or you are making a judgment on the law, we're idiots, both of us. When it comes to commentary, if you've got an audience that watches you, that even if it's a small audience or a big one, then no, your opinion does matter. You're not an idiot for saying what you're saying. The thing that dictates whether you are an idiot or not is if you're telling the truth. That's what really matters here on YouTube. Are you being honest or are you saying things because it benefits either you or one of your friends? And that is exactly what Katie does because she'll say things to benefit herself. She won't tell reality. She'll clickbait, she'll change things, she'll modify things and that's what's gotten her in trouble in the past but that's what you're doing if you're not telling the truth right okay so then claire bear who i don't even think is living in reality i don't know why because i know nothing about claire bear but i don't even think she's in reality she says that the reason why he has a great case is because he have fi uh, she filed on him now the thing is what makes her filing on him either good for him and bad for her or good for her and bad for him the truth reality okay you don't just say this happened and it happened and that's the thing that makes everyone in the world look at these people that who choose to look at this and say that they're in a cult because a cult modifies reality to benefit the the, the group for appearances and or the leader the most they don't care now if you're in a group and you're actively modifying reality and it's bad it's based on lies it's negative what is a group that modifies reality that's not a cult maybe like a dungeons and dragons club someone who's going to meet to talk about movies and they put themselves in there and start you know whatever but you guys are trying to do life you're trying to modify reality and life and then in a group setting, justify it, which in my opinion makes it cult-like. Uh, also, Claire, and there can be big gaps, I'll just edit them out. But also, Claire, just take the things he claims about her and go look at the what really happened. So either you guys are just really bad at fact-checking. You're either really bad at going out and looking at what happened the evidence on both sides what he did toward her and what she did toward him because if you do none of the things that she filed against him were lies none of those things were wrong right i mean you see that too <sighs> here we go we got just a few seconds here because you are all, and yeah. because evidence contradicts everything she said legally Okay, so she makes the argument that the evidence that's there contradicts everything that she said legally. You heard her. It's a clip. That is not true. That is a lie. And I can prove it. Unlike these two who literally, when these two get up there, they say things and then don't they don't prove it they don't care there's no clips there's no reference to where you can go and check them check what they're saying they just talk now if you're just talking and you're just lying that's one thing making shit up living in some fantasy world but when you're doing it so that either yourself or a friend can gain a bunch of money in a charity that is where we get into problem not so you know we all get mad about what instagram or twitter period and she ironically admits that when katie goes on instagram or twitter that it infuriates her you got something you need help claire you need help it's okay to get mad at somebody 
But when you get mad at someone and, and you're sitting there just repetitiously doing what you guys do, there's an issue, right? They'll try to say that about us, Navy. They'll say we're obsessed and all this garbage. Uh, what's the, how do you prove who's obsessed and who's not? Well, let's, let's use something that doesn't relate to this situation to prove who's obsessed and who's not. So a person who's covering things that are actually happening, like new things, developments, and they're letting people know who are following the situation, that's called a YouTuber. That's called commentary. That's not obsession. So commentary can be obsession. Your commentary is obsession when you breach into the private, when you get really repetitious with things that don't relate to the breaking news, or maybe if you uh, get personal, I'd say is where that, that line is drawn. So it's like, can someone doing commentary be, if that's true, then every channel that specifically talks about one thing would be obsessed that's not the case but every any channel that crosses the line in my opinion is obsessed go ahead sorry one of the thing is too is that you can also use or define obsession as being willing to overlook evidence that doesn't agree with your narrative of someone you support right oh god or such a good point somebody you know exactly so if you overlook the, yeah if you just over willing to just bypass the evidence because this person's evil and they must stay evil the entire time then you are obsessed Yes, yes, good point. I, I I mean, that's very uh, heavy because that's what's going on. And that's the whole presentation that I'm going to make right after this, the end of this stupid video. Okay, yeah, you sit on something, but it's not a fence, Claire. You are not sitting on a fence. I get why you're trying to tell them. See, when you're being deceptive to the people watching... I get why you'd call yourself a fence sitter. You aren't a fence sitter. You're so hard on one side that you can't even realize when you're wrong. Just like Navy said, fucking obsession, man. Okay, so you got anything else, Navy? I'm good, brother.